So, uh, what was the score last night? <laughs> I don't know. It was 13 to 5 or something like that. I mean, I mean, they won. That's all that matters. Um, I saw Carlos Beltran hit against the shift, hit the opposite way. That's, that's a great thing. Um, but what I keep hearing about this team is the starting pitching doesn't matter because they're going to score runs. And you know what? In the end of July and mid-August, that's fine because you're often facing the back end of the rotation. But when it gets to the playoffs, uh, you're not going to be facing the back end of the rotation. So we need to pitch, field, and hit on a timely basis. The, here's the thing about this team. This is what we need to know about them. And, and we can't know because we're not in the clubhouse. So the question is, is this a team that says, well, we're down two runs, but if we can just get to Jacoby or Brett at the top of the order, we'll get those runs back and we'll be okay. Or is this a team that says, um, yeah, we're down two runs, but uh, we're going to hit a three-run homer next inning, so it'll be okay. Uh, I think this team is more of the former. Right? I think they believe in each other and that feeds off itself and that's how they score runs. And then the three-run homers come. But if, they're, if the team is the latter, if they start falling into wait for the three-run home run, uh, we're not going to get anywhere. So that's my opinion of last night's game. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm tired of these. You know, they scored 21 runs. They scored 13 runs. That's not baseball. You know, I'll talk about that a little bit more. Okay. But I... I know you wanted to say something about Brendan Ryan. Yeah, it's two things. Definitely about, baseball related. It's definitely baseball related. I mean, two things about Brendan Ryan. One, Stephen Drew's not playing because Brendan Ryan's playing, and I, I disagree with that. I wholeheartedly disagree with that. I hate that I spend so much time on Stephen Drew, but he is an outstanding fielding second baseman, and that's more important than what his batting average is. And the second thing I will say about Brendan Ryan is, come on, tell me you don't look at the screen and go, what? What is up with that mustache? I'm sure he's got some great reason for having that crazy mustache, but it's not 1890. And I don't know. I guess I'm not a big fan yet. <laughs> I reserve the right to change my mind. Okay. So, uh, Nate Eovaldi. I will not change my mind about Nate. Great game. I guess he's our ace now. Um, so, way to go, Nate. Uh, good game last night. He threw strikes. He held them when he had to held them. And we got the win, and that's all that matters. All right, so then I have to ask you, what would your ideal game be? I don't even have to tell you what would be my ideal game. I, I can tell you what was my ideal game. So, little story, it's August 15th, 1983. I'm in high school. My dad goes, hey, let's go to the Yankee game. It's about 6 o'clock. Game starts at 7 o'clock, living in northern Jersey. Head over to the game, scalp some tickets, get in there. Dave Rigetti versus Britt Burns. Okay, this is going to be a good game. Dave Stegman leads off for the White Sox for the White Sox and hits a single. Carlton Fisk is batting second. He sacrifices. Sacrifice bunt from Carlton Fisk, okay? They used to do these things. Stegman goes to second, goes to third on a wild pitch, believe it or not. Tom Pachoriak is up third. Sacrifice fly. A sacrifice fly. Stegman comes home. one nothing. End of game. Burns pitches a complete game. Rigetti pitches a complete game. Uh, Rigetti gives up five hits. Burns gives up three hits. Now, I think 90% of the people watching this and 90% of the people who follow baseball today would go, huh, what a boring game. But I gotta tell you, that's how baseball is played. That's when pitchers dominate. And this wasn't any pancake lineup. These were guys could hit, right? Don Baylor, Dave Winfield, these kinds of guys. These were guys could hit in the whole game, nine innings of just how is this gonna break, the tension, all the way down to the last out of the game. 54 outs of pure tension, one nothing game, Yankee Stadium, hot night in August with my dad. That's just about the ideal game. Great memory. Great <laughs> memory. Very nostalgic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so let's get back to... You don't uh, like nostalgia. No, I'm not crazy about it. It's like, yeah, you know, it's a good story, but 2015, starting pitching? Uh, 2015, starting pitching. It's a reoccurring theme. I, I don't even know what who our starting pitchers are. We are, we are, it is such a tenuous line right now to who's throwing out there. I guess Severino's coming uh, to pitch tomorrow. I'm a, I'm a little disappointed about that because I did offer to throw. I wrote to the Yankees, told them I was available to pitch against Chicago, but I guess they didn't take me up on it. Uh, <laughs> can't imagine why. They're looking so, for 97. Yeah, they were. Not 79. Hey, I could throw 60 for two innings, you know. Um, can I batting practice? Brian Mitchell's pitching today. Well, good luck, Brian, or tonight. Um, if he wins tonight, uh, we've won this series and the exclamation point on a great road trip. Uh, another game to go tomorrow, of course, but 
It's been a good road trip, especially if we win tonight and tomorrow. All right. Good. All right. That's it. Have a good game. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment or subscribe. Thanks very much. All right. Bye-bye.